This train terminates here. All change, please. Hello one and all, it's Team Traction here. Today's episode is the first of a new series titled All Change, where we document the changing landscape of East Anglian rail travel. Today is the first episode, and maybe the most sentimental for some. It's of course featuring the Class 37s and the infamous short set. So join me on viewing them on their last ever day of operation on the 21st of September 2019. There won't be too much narration in this long episode, purely so you can listen to brilliant sounds like this. So a little bit of history for you. The Class 37s have been working in East Anglia since the mid-1950s. They have been a staple of diesel traction around here for over 50 years. However, from the mid-1980s onwards, the inter-regional and sort of like suburban journeys, they used to be 37 to 47 loco hauled, um, but they were slowly displaced by the DMUs, first the MET cams like the 101s, 105s and then on to more modern next gen DMUs like the 153s, 6s and 170s. So like I said, sentiment could not have gotten in the way of nostalgia. All of the loco hall sets and loco hall coaching stock, they were all gone by the mid 90s. But fast forward just about 25 years time and there are now 13 locomotive hall departures, sometimes even 16 per day, heading for the East Anglian coast on the local trains, on what's now known as the Wherry Lines. So what caused the resurgence of locomotive hauled passenger stock, especially in such a rural area as this? Let's find out. So first of all, a little information about the area that we're currently in, for those who don't know what I'm talking about. So currently, we have just left Norwich Station um, in East Anglia, and we're heading for Great Yarmouth. This is on the well-known, very popular, Wherry Lines. These were some of the first railways in Norfolk, and it linked Norwich to the coast at Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft. Later on there was a branch added between the midpoint Reedham on the East Lowestoft branch to join back to Yarmouth via Burney Arms which is one of Britain's least used stations. So the line speed is 60 miles an hour in top places it has many landmarks, including two very old, very antiquated, uh, very life-expired swing bridges, one at Reedham, which is quite well known, and the lesser known one at Summer Layton. It's also one of the last places on the network to find semaphore signalling, which are the old moving arm types rather than the colour lights. These, as well as the Class 37s, are being replaced by the end of the year. 
So, for these rural lines with vintage infrastructure, constant unit failures and high numbers of passengers, locomotive hauled coaching stock or LHCS was the answer. Today the 37s or Type 3s operate most duties on these lines. They have a booked duty and accrued uh, by Great Wrangler drivers and guards. The locomotives must be fitted with driver reminder appliance or DRA and must also have fire suppression equipment in the event of a fire in the rear locomotive and extinguisher must go off. So far five locomotives have been fitted with the equipment and been used in Air Anglia. This being class 37 405, 419, 422, 424 and 425. So as stated, even after the 90s, when locomotive hall coaching stock was pretty much abolished uh, in the Anglia region, it still hung on in one form or another. First of all, 47s were hired in by Greater Anglia, partly due to unit shortages, but partly because they wanted a direct through service from London Liverpool Street to Great Yarmouth. The London Liverpool Street to Norwich section was with a class 90 and 8 carriages under its own power. But of course, as you can tell, the wherry lines are not one to be electrified. So, it would then go dead, drop down its pantograph, a 47 would hook onto the rear and drag it to Yarmouth. This arrangement carried on until summer 2014. So as well as doing those drags, the 47s also topped and tailed a short set which conformed of two or three Mark III coaches. This decision was made with direct rail services in early 2011. This was to cover one of the 156 units that hit a lorry on the Sudbury branch. Um, this became a dedicated permanent duty in June 2011, and this was supposed to finish in October 2011, then November 2011, then December 2011, and look how long it's gone on for now. However, whilst in operation, it wasn't uncommon for other locomotives to drop in and out in place of the 47s due to their low reliability. So, class 20 number 2304 and class 57 number 5704 were seen substituting in February 2010. And for those of you who just want an update on the route, we have already passed straight through Brundle Gardens, the first station. This is closed at the moment uh, due to conflicting works with the new sets. Um, and we are now pulling into Brundle Station. This is where the Norwich to Yarmouth line splits from the Norwich to Lowestoft line. I'm 
47s soldiered on, but not for much longer. In June 2015, the DRS-37-4s replaced the 47s. By that point, the Class 47s, or Type 4s, they'd worked for pretty solidly for around four years, which is more than quadruple their expectancy uh, for this area. But uh, as you can tell by the dates, the story really doesn't end there. pulling into Lingwood station and you can see some of the new colour light signalling that's being installed um, a lot of it is still in paper bags you'll see a lot of um, they probably are literally just bin bags taped on um, knowing, knowing network rail um, they are installed so they're there but they've not been commissioned yet so they still use the semaphores uh, which date from the 1940s, I think, 1950s. Very old signals. Watchful eye of the home semaphore. We're now coasting into Akel Station, which is the midpoint of the journey to Yarmouth. This is also the passing point, is as the Yarmouth branch has, has been degraded to single track operation. And as we leave Acle and through these trees, we come on to the flats, which is about a, well, about a five, ten mile stretch of completely flat land, which is what the Broads is known for. And the, the, the line is dead straight, dead level, um, and very, very windy. So a lot of uh, this footage um, already, but even especially for this bit, has to be. Um, the volume levels have to be toned down, which is a shame when you want to hear the thrash. But it is just so windy. Uh, you can see with the camera shake as well. We're going flat out here, which is 60. Um, I think the reason they're not allowed faster um, is um, due to the track work itself. Even though it's straight, uh, it doesn't mean the track's in perfect nick. I mean, the Bernie Arms branch, the one I talked about earlier, that's completely closed off to traffic. Um, no trains are allowed to run on there. Um, and pretty soon, when we go down to the lowest off, we go past where it joins, um, and you will definitely see why there's no trains allowed on there. So yes, this is um, the last stretch before Yarmouth. You see by the weather, the weather was absolutely lovely. Um, couldn't complain there at all. 
you're wondering, uh, the road we're going parallel to is the A47, and yes, quite often people try and race the train to Yarmouth from April. Uh, this is the last stretch of the A47, which is single carriageway. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, flooding is quite common here as well. Uh, so it's a constant battle to keep this line in operation, um, but it is a very vital line, so I'm glad they kept it all out. So see you another day. As you see, you couldn't ask for better weather. Um, absolutely lovely skies. Um, really, really good luck for the last day. I say this was a, this was near the end of September, so to get a day like this uh, was very, very rare. Um, and uh, it worked out brilliantly for filming because I wouldn't have liked to have had my head out much um, if it had been pouring down with rain and ice cold. So to actually have been uh, relatively warm uh, was a good contrast. So we're coming to the curve here. Um, it's on the other side, it's now double track again. That's because these are two bi-directional lines rather than you know one goes one way, one goes the other. Um, because the one on the uh, right-hand side is the line to Burnley, um, which again, like I say, is closed. Uh, so no trains run there. Um, Fortunately, the last 37s that ran that line was last year, and I couldn't get to see them. Um, most people didn't realise that was going to be their last time on that stretch, though, so it wasn't as a popular event. Coming around here now, uh, you'll see some overgrown track and some lampposts. This is the old yarm of carriage sidings um, in quite complete disarray, uh, completely overgrown. They've still got the old platforms there, though, the carriage platforms. Um, and Greater Anglia are quite adamant that they're really struggling for storage space at the moment. So much so that they've built five new sidings on the Mid North Railway, which you'll see in a future episode. Um, I've always wondered why don't they convert, uh, well, to basically just relay these carriage sidings at Yarmouth. They're relatively close to Crown Point, they're on a quiet line, so they won't. Um, really bother many um, services with um, anti-coaching stop movements and it would be relatively easy to upgrade because the track's already there uh, they don't need to buy new land or anything it's just a consideration Great Anglia so we're coming over the crossover now and into the platform at Yarmouth um, coming over or oh, under sorry should I say the bridge this uh, was a railway bridge um, to, well, originally, it was a railway bridge. Uh, it used to go over Braden Water and went around the town to Yarmouth Beach Station. That was part of the line that went from Yarmouth to Lower Stock to Direct, rather than via Reading. Hello. So our motive power for the last day, I haven't talked much about that, uh, it's 37.409 and 37.44, masquerading as 5.58. Um, these are two BR large logo blue, 37-4s. Uh, one of them is called Lord Hinton, the other is Avro Vulcan, which is why it's being cosmetically repainted into number 37.558, when it's in fact 44. split my day up and um, I decided to stay in Yarmouth for a little while so I could get the departure of the 37s from Yarmouth. Enjoy.
So, after a little while in Yarmouth, we come back to the station to catch the 37's return. So you can see here the bridge, uh, which I was talking about, that used to run from another line that went from Yarmouth to Lowestoft. This has since closed, it closed in the 60s. Um, the other pieces of his history here are the old semaphores, they're still up, still in operation. Um, and the old signal box which is boarded up um, that will be relocated I believe I'm not sure where but I think it is being preserved but as you can see the 37 coming over the crossover and back into platform 3 uh, there are four platforms at Yarmouth uh, for such a quiet station that doesn't see many workings there's four platforms and they are incredibly long because they used to have to accommodate the um, class 90s no longer is that So here is 3744, it's numbered 558 after the Avro Vulcan of the same registration code. That one was the last airworthy one in operation, sadly it's been decommissioned now.
and after speeding back over the flats, we are now arriving at Eagle Station again. So not only is all the infrastructure and the locos of vintage on this line, all of the stations are original and even got the old enamel signs. It really is like we're sitting on a line that is still stuck in the 1950s. It's brilliant. So I've decided to split this video into three parts because of just how long it is. An hour and 35 minutes of my account. So, enjoy this last shot of some good old fashioned 37 thrash. Three, two, one. 